Yeah, I reckon we just wing it tonight because, you know, we're champions, so we can. It's very... Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, great flick on by Alan Armstrong. Oh, oh, what a beauty! Oh, what a beauty! Choose life, choose county, choose Pagana, Jones and Gannon, choose being the outsider, choose the Romania shirt, choose Gleason's volume, Brett's header, choose county branded leisure wear and a range of fabrics, choose Paddy Madden Lasher, another one in, choose William Guy Collar, choose the quarter of Hinchliffe Palmer Keenum, I've peaked too soon with this. <laughs> <laughs> Choose having a proper bounce around on the pitch. Choose a seldom hails lap dance. Choose cans from the office. Choose pints, cocktails and shots. Choose singing until your voice goes. Choose more cans on the way home and wondering who the hell you are on Monday morning. Choose being 72 hours on and still buzzing. But who needs reasons when you're back in the football league, baby? Come on! Oh! Yes, you heard it right. We are back and so are we here at the Scarf Bagama War. Hello, how you doing? Been up too much? I'm Nick Lee. That's Russ Johnson. Right, Russ. Crack on, mate. Nice. <laughs> nice. I was going to wear mine. I was going to wear mine as well. I should have done it. Uh, yeah, well, what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about being champions, and that's all we need to talk about. We're going to do that for like as long as we can, as long as we want to. Um, and we've got Liam Richardson with us to discuss it all with us and relive it all with us and maybe even get a bit teary along the way. Um, yes. So, I mean, I don't, I, where, where should we start? I mean, where do you want to start? Should, should we tell everyone who this is brought to us by first, Russell? Oh God, I, I was that excited about I'll put, I'll put my real glasses on again now. I'm going, I'm going Johnny, Johnny two glasses here. Uh, we are absolutely, <laughs> what a day, what a day. We are absolutely delighted to be ushering in this wild new era by being sponsored by another Stockport team in promotion winning form, Vizio Arcade Machine Manufacturer Arcade Wow. Their premium quality, brand new retro style arcade machines are popular in homes and business and come with over 15,000 games and are probably a good way to celebrate getting back to the Football League. You can see all their arcade machines, even a range of visits to their Stockport showroom at arcadewow.co.uk or see the link in the description on our page. And as part of the collaboration, County fans can get a 50 quid discount by using code TSBW at the checkout. And if delivery is for the Northwest, you can select collect as your delivery option and Arcade Wow will deliver and install it completely free saving you another 99 quid and we get a bit of that at all which is good isn't it me and you russ so yeah. visit stockport's very own arcade world at uk and save 149 pounds now excellent stuff um, I'm, I'm no good stuff undoing it, the shirt, right? i've i've I've, un, I've, <laughs> I've upped i've upped it from good stuff to excellent stuff um oh yeah yeah I, I, liam where should we start Go on, it's your podcast today. You take oh. over. I'm going to sit back. My my head's all over the place, Ross. It's been a it's been a absolute whirlwind uh, 72 hours. So um, yeah, I mean, like, you know, first of all, let's just congratulate the lads because you know I think after last Sunday at Wrexham, you know, it was horrible for all of us, and, and the pressure was on. I mean, we I think we all felt that, and then. So I'm really trying not to be distracted here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the pressure was on, and, and full credit to the players because they, they kept the nerve with, with two of the best performances of the season, really, on Wednesday on, um, against Torquay. And then yeah. to back that up, I mean, we were all, I, I mean, me and Sam Byrne, we were bricking it going into Sunday. We didn't know what to expect. And for it to be so comfortable, you know, as soon as we scored the first goal, I thought that, that was it. That was it. There was, there was no stopping us from then on. Yeah, absolutely. I, I've said it. For quite a while, as soon as we start, as soon as I see him play, all the all the fear and emotion and and sort of 
not emotion, all the fear and anxiety goes out of me. And it did on Sunday as well. We did a bit of a show before, you wouldn't have seen this, we did a, a live pre-match show at uh, Notion from 12, to, oh, well, it wasn't 12, was it? About half 12 to, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, half 12 yeah. to half one. Um, and you could, you, could feel, you, could, you could feel the tension in the room. You know, I was, I was nervous. Um, other people were saying, you know, most people were nervous and you could just, you could just feel it. But as soon as you start playing, like you say, as soon as we scored that first goal, and what a goal as well. Was it, was it nine minutes in or ten minutes in? Yeah, ten minutes. Just clinical. You know, a little touch on the edge of the penalty area to make the space for it. And then, you know, the goalkeeper's, what, six foot two. You hit it low. It's brilliant. Just just brilliant. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's weird because, like, for the last six months, I've just had this massive ball of anxiety in my stomach. It's constantly. Insane. Yeah. And the last few days, I just I don't know how to feel that now. It's gone. And uh, so, I mean, at the minute, I'm filling it with alcohol. But after that, <laughs> yeah. where do I go from there? I don't know. I don't know. You, sh- you should become one of those people who gets really angry about other people's bins. <laughs> that, that, well, that's, that's, uh, that's how I'm going to take up the summer, I think. A bin fl- angry be, about... be a bimfluencer. Oh no no! I don't. I don't want anyone looking at me and thinking that's the way to do things. No, uh, definitely. You, you reckon? When, when when people put the bin up against my wall, like that type of thing. You know, why does it have to be against my wall? There's other walls to put it up against. I just can't believe we're talking about how nervous we are. Look at us now. Just look. look at, have you ever seen such an unprofessional thing in your whole life? <laughs> well, this is the nerves are totally gone. This is it. A lot of people were nervous. I, I interviewed loads of people. Not loads of people. There was about I don't know half a dozen. No, Russ Hyde, Waggy. Uh, Phil Lloyd, um, Dave Wright, all I mean, if you you know we sp- I spoke to them all. Most of them were were nervous. Okay, Waggy, yeah, all right. You said you were confident. Oh well, well done you. Fucking hell, <laughs> you know. But <laughs> but but yeah, it was it it was nerve wracking. But let's let let's get into the match itself. That goal settled the nerves, and we knew. I mean, we, we, I don't really want to spend too much time talking about Wrexham because we are the champions. It's not. It's not about Wrexham, but th- there was always that thing in my mind that they would they were not going to get something from Dagenham. You know, it was a really tough place to go, Dagenham. So we had, to, I felt like we had a bit of leeway. Yeah, I mean, you go back to nerves, and and you know, a lot of people I spoke to seemed more confident that Wrexham would drop points than than we would win. You know, mm. and, um, John Kieran was one of them, to be fair, and and you know, to be fair. Uh, I was always of the case of like, I don't want to be relying on anyone else. So you don't you want to go out there and, and get the job done. To be fair, yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the early goal was key. I think um, when we score the first goal, I think we've only lost twice this season. I think Dagenham and Grimsby. Um, when we score first, we usually win, and when we score early, we we always win. So I think that was that was the key. And as you say, it just just settled the nerves, and it it was a much more enjoyable day than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Much more, yeah, much more relaxing and and not fraught with anything. As as, as, as the second goal went in, the whole thing just became a, a party. The whole second half, yeah, you know, um, yeah. I, as one of my tweets went viral at the, in the last minute. Obviously, for the uh, <laughs> brilliant tweet that I mean, how, how yeah. many how many likes has it got now? Do you know? Do you even Over know? Twenty thousand now. Over, oh. it's, it's my most successful tweet of the season. But you know, it's it's also the club's last ever tweet in non-league. So I think that's <laughs> yeah. quite a, a fitting way to go out. I mean, don't remember, I wasn't trying to be like disrespectful to Halifax. It's just I was looking at no one was watching the game at that point. No, no. absolutely no one was interested in what was no. going. Everyone was just like getting ready to to get on the pitch. So it was yeah. just that's it. Oh, yeah, I but... could I, I couldn't even see the game. I was like stood. I was stood with you, one and Nick. Was we stood? Well, we were stood yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I had my uh, I had my tongue down your ear, didn't I? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't even see what was going on. It, you know, it just wasn't interesting whatsoever. Let, let's talk about the goals though. I mean, the first one, you know. That's what you pay your money for, isn't it? That's that's Magic. that's class class Paddy Madden, that isn't it? Yeah, hundred uh, percent. I spoke to Mark Stott after the game, and we were saying, you know, he's he's paid back what we paid for him tenfold just in that last week, just by scoring in those last two games. It's yeah, it's it, you've got your investment back already on him, and uh, yeah, twenty five goals for the season. But uh, as I said to Charlie, I think before the game, it's, it's it's so much more than that, and that's why he's one one player of the year. We've, we've all, you know, you go back. In previous seasons, we've always had great goal. You know, players that have scored a lot of goals. Danny Lloyd, Jason Oswell, they didn't win the club's Player of the Year because I think county fans usually appreciate grafters. You know, people yeah, like Lewis yeah, Montreal, yeah. Like, well, Paddy gets it because he, he gets the goals, but he's also such a grafter and such a, a team player, and uh, he deserves it. He definitely celebrated the most out of any player after after <laughs> the last 
couple of days, yeah. But, um, he deserves it. He deserves it. Yeah, I don't think there's any Guinness left in Stockport now, is there? No. No, well, <laughs> yeah. listen, he got, he got so drunk, he ended up putting me on his shoulders on Monday night after the uh, after the parade and like carrying me around the room on his shoulders. I mean, he's done some heavy lifting that year, this year, but that takes a bit. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we got you on, for these stories. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. I'm, so, I'm sorry to be boring here, but just going back to that goal, that I love. Well, I love yeah, that. Yeah, I, like, I love yeah. the shape. To, I love. I love the shape to shoot and feign, just yeah. to just to, just to yeah. send the defender get a get space. get a tiny bit of space and then and then and then go with the shot. Just just brilliant. And he's going to be. I, I, he's going to be great in League Two as well, isn't he? Yeah, he's he's a League One player. Isn't he? You know, he's, mm. he's ten goals off. I think he's ten goals off the all-time goal-scoring record in League One. So yeah. Uh, hopefully he can do that with us in a, in a couple of years' time. And and I didn't know. I only found this out over the past couple of days. He had a he had a trial with us when he was fifteen or something. Yeah, when he was playing in Ireland, he he, he came over and and he played a, a mid season friendly that we played. Um, it was under Jim at the time, and obviously he watched us play against. Uh, I think it was. I can't remember who the game was against. But obviously, yeah, he saw Liam Dickinson score for County. I think you mentioned that after the game. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I remember speaking to him about it when he first signed, and it's kind of like, it's like a move that's been on the cards for for quite a few times. To be fair, so right. Um, yeah, here he is, and, and it's nice. great as well because he really appreciates it because I know he spent a lot of most of his career in League One, but he's played it. Like, no disrespect to him, but Yeovil, Fleetwood, Scunthorpe. So in terms of like. Fan base. This is this is on a different level to anything he's experienced before, and he he, he loves it. To be fair, so nice. Yeah, good. Um, some comments are coming in. Let's have a look. Silo Mass, friend of the podcast. Mark stopped lied to us. He said that Paddy get thirty goals, and he only got twenty five. No, don't care. Just don't care. Actually, um, and Mark Brockbank. We've not had a goal scorer or a finisher like that since Luke Beckett. Mm-hmm. I'd probably go along with that. Probably go along yeah. with that, definitely. Um, natural, sort of natural goal scorer um, for, for, for that. So, yeah, lovely stuff. And then the second one, I'm not going to talk about anything else. I know I know, Madden at the bar. Um, but, yeah, the second one, just, again, really good. It's a, it's a sort of goal that, um, for Collar, I, I, we know he can hit him like that, can't he? You know, true. And he almost gets it too. You know when they say he almost gets it too... Um, T- t- I don't know what they say, two on target, not two on target. What do they say? It's it too well, almost. All right, Andy yeah. Townsend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, but he has, he's, he's absolutely, he's absolutely laced it, Annie, he, past that keeper. It's w- what a great finish that is. And it's not an easy finish either, off a bouncing ball. On, on his weak left foot as well. And Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. I think it's, it's, it's the fact that it's come back at the keeper so quickly that it's taken him by surprise. I mean... I know some people say goalkeeper should never get from at your near post, but he's got no chance with that. I mean, it's, it's the power that's 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 beating him. So yeah, yeah, and and really fitting that that those two guys are the ones to get the goals because they've been so important like all season long, haven't they? So really fitting way to to round it off. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But every player really has just been superb. I know it's easy saying that because we're the champions. Did, did, did we mention that that we were the champions? Is any just 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 for anybody else that's listening that's not from the club? Uh, oh, we are the champions. Yeah, that'll be the Wrexham viewers whinging again. <laughs> you've, you've, you've not bloody stopped yeah. since because football is completely serious, isn't it? You know, as, as we all know, football songs are definitely not tongue in cheek or anything like that. Every word in every football chant must be taken completely seriously. Yeah, and fair play to the Wrexham lads for doing that. Fair play. <laughs> I just don't. I don't give a shit this week. Did you see the thing of the Queen yesterday with Alan Titchmarsh? There's, so, there's something for the Queen's Jubilee. It was yesterday, and, and Titchmarsh was on stage. I don't know why they couldn't get they couldn't get Dimmock or Charlie Walsh, uh, Tommy Walsh. I don't know, but Titchmarsh is up to the stage. It's this massive thing, like proper sucking up to the Queen, and then he finishes it. Everyone's clapping, and the camera cuts to the Queen, and she's just like, and that, that's that's how I feel. It's just water for dust back. These Wrexham fans, they can try and get to us, but they won't. You're a, bit, you're a lot calmer about dickhead opposition supporters, well, so I've noticed, since Sunday. The table speaks for itself, doesn't it? It's a big difference. Well, yeah, and that's that's kind of what I've tried to do. I, 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 have, I have taken the bait a couple of times this season, especially from Grimsby and Wrexham early days, but 
since then, I just thought, let's get let's get the season done and then see who's got the last who's having the last laugh. And it's us. So, you know, you can sing we're coming for you all you want and be a bit, you know, with your pointy gun hands and you know and your and your, and your face mask in the in the home end, giving us loads of shit. But you know, we're champions and 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 nobody else is. So I'm quite happy I mean, about that. I am the one that's had to troll through all the uh <laughs> the reps and replies whenever we drop points throughout the season and it's yeah. like, for me to read now that we're trying to create a rivalry with them and we're obsessed is uh it's, it's an interesting take in it really because uh I, I did enjoy you going over to the uh, facebook group and asking where the league two group was yeah, my social media got gradually more unprofessional as the night went on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we won't talk about that. But yeah, I mean, listen, they've obviously just, the, the Fuck You Wrexham song, they've obviously just taken to heart, but it's not about them. You know, it's a song about whoever would have been our closest title round. Exactly. Album, yeah, so. yeah. Thank, thankfully, it fit. You know, if it was Chesterfield or Notts County, I'm not sure what we'd have done. But uh, yeah, it's just it's it's not about them. I can, can, you know, there's some nice people at Wrexham, the press officer there, I get on with him. But um, there's no there's no right. It's all about county, as far as yeah. anyone's concerned, really. Yeah, same, same. And it's as, from our perspective, it's not about the fearless in devotion lads or the Rob Ryan Red lads. Whether they are spot on. It's about whoever finishes second, and they they to 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 a certain extent, it's like a compliment to them, isn't it? Because they pushed us. I I was getting really really nervous, oh. and that that peaked at Wrexham away, um, because that for me was the worst, my worst away end that I've ever been in. Possibly Chesterfield away when we got beat four nil, and everyone was singing Luke Beckett, what's the score? Beckett Beckett, what's the score? Back in early two thousand, whatever whatever it was. But that was just horrific. So to come out and win it and win it by six points as well, you know. But it, but Re- it, Wrexham will always take the. Uh, they've always got the push stop put all the way trophy to celebrate. If the FA Trophy and the playoffs don't come off, then they've, they've got that. Aren't they? I'm, sh- I'm sure you get a trophy for like pushing us all the way, don't you? That's what Tottenham usually do, isn't it? So. <laughs> <laughs> um. But no, let's let let's move on from that. Let's talk about the players. Um, we, we, we th- obviously we had the Player of the Year award, which was Paddy. Uh, the Goal of the Year, Goal of the Season award, which quite rightly was keen for me. I voted for both of those. I can say that uh, hand on heart. Um, and young play was Rydell, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, I voted for yeah. Rydell as well. So I got I got a hat trick. So I'm quite pleased. That's, I don't that's that's never happened for me. Um, so I'm quite pleased with that. But like I say, every player really has played the part. And Chellen has always said, we'll need the whole squad, that everyone's going to play a part. And they absolutely have, haven't they? Yeah, I mean, when you look at like Zane Francis and Gold coming in for the last two games, two clean sheets, two big performances. Um, Courtney Duffus, you know, 60 minutes yeah. at Chesterfield. But what a, what a big impact it was. Yeah. And, and was really great. got us over the line in that game. So... Every single player, you know, I was speaking to Ethan Ross after the game. Um, after the game, and it was like you go back to that win at home to Wrexham. He made some big saves in that first half when they were one 0 up to, to keep us in the game. And the difference between winning and losing that game is six points. So, literally, every player in the squad has has, has made a contribution this season, and, and they all deserve um, all the accolades that they're getting right now. Yeah. Duffus is very much the Ken Charlery of the affair, isn't he? Which is what we kind of wanted from him. You know, if he gets us three points at Chesterfield, then job done. Yeah, yeah. You know, you go back to like Jason Gilchrist coming in uh, the back end of the North Wing season, played about five minutes against Darlington and uh, never yeah. seen him again. But for me, anyone that, that pulls on the shirt during a title winning season is a, is a champion at the end of the day. Even Reedy. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. Someone's Reed's been mentioned, and Reed gets a lot of mentions about his his uh, contribution. But he must have made lots of contributions off the pitch in terms of team morale and things, because he seems like a bubbly character. You, you'll yeah, yeah. know more than I will. Yeah, the, the lads love Reedy, and you know he, he scored away at Maidenhead. So you know, yeah, every, you know he's kept players on the toes in terms of pushing, you know, like to Madden and Quigs to, to keep performing. You know, you always every player. Plays a part in that sense, you know. Luke Rashby Hammond, you know, has come in and provided yeah. really good competition for Ben. Um, yeah, and and Reedy's more than played his part as well. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm not suggesting that having a bubbly character wins your titles, by the way, before anyone comments about that. But it, you know, <laughs> but it's uh, it's 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 better than being like downbeat in the corner and and uh, you know being a cancer in the squad, isn't it? Because that'd have the opposite effect. But yeah, like, so, like um, me on here. Yeah, pretty much like you on here. Yeah, I've been trying to I've been trying to send you out on loan for bloody years. <laughs> Go and get some development. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, okay, so. I wasn't I, like I said. I didn't have any any plans for this. I was just going to talk about the about winning the t- the title. But if you could pick, who I tell you what, who was you, who did you pick? If if you were allowed to pick Liam, your uh, player of the season and young player, who who did you pick? Um, I think I said when I came on the show last time, Paddy for me was was our player of the season. Um, and and that's not to take away from you know mm. Will Collar, Ryan Crowsdale, who were both. Right up there for me. I mean, Ryan Cross they're playing fifty games in a season for in a title winning season. It's it is an incredible achievement. Yeah, I went with Paddy, and then young player. Um, I think I think I went with Ryan Rydell in the end, but I mean, again, Ollie Crankshaw. Yeah, right up there. What an impact he's had. Um, Eleven goals since coming in, and uh, yeah, I think it, you could have picked either of them really. Toss of the coin. Yeah. Oh, did you go for Nick? Same as you, man. Did you? Yeah, Palmer, uh, Madden Keane, Rydell, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the thing about that Jordan Keane goal as well, is the, because of the position we're in, the camera angle doesn't do it any no. justice at all. No. I was right behind it, and there's so much dip and swerve, it hits him side of the bar. It, it was a quality strike. I mean, he doesn't score normal goals, Keane, no, to be fair to him. Yeah, it was the underside, uh, underside of the bar that sealed it for me. Yeah, no, I was it. better when it goes in. I don't know why, but... Yeah, I'm, I'm such a goes. perv. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh, I think the reason it got voted the best goal is probably because we're all we us county fans we're all aficionados, aren't we? We can tell despite the camera angle, you know, put that in the Premier League and it's an absolute worldie in it, and you can just yeah. tell from from the way. I, I noticed he tried to hit one similar, didn't he? Was it against Torquay or was it against Halifax? I can't remember. Yeah, Torquay it was. Yeah, Torquay. Yeah, <laughs> didn't, didn't quite come off, but you know, there you go. Um, what do we say about? For me, the four—I don't know what we, we, could, we should give them a collective name. The four legends: Hinchliff, Minion, Palmer, and Kino. The, the quartet of awesome. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I mean, what what we're saying? I mean, for me, they've, they're the only players to win two titles with the club, um, and they should have some sort of—I don't know—some sort of like plaque on the side of the cheetle end or something for me. Well- you know when you when you started the show, Russ, which was not tonight. I mean, in general, when you started mm. the show, it's like I think it was like in between the Alan Lord era ending and the Neil Young one beginning. Yeah. And would you, if 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 someone had told you then and said, right, we're going to sign four players in a year's time who are going to be with us when we get to the football league, that was at a point where there's just. The whole squad was just being turned over every season. Every single season, yeah, yeah. And over half a decade to have players who it's man, I, I never thought I no. thought would be years off that. Amazing, yeah. And and I've got to say as well, we had for, for the for the new listeners or that not listened for a while, we had Sam Minion on in was it 2016? We had him on. I can't remember. Yeah. And we were semi professional. He was obviously semi professional, and we said to him. Would you sign a full time contract if it came? And without even a heartbeat, he just said, "Yeah." Um, and we, I, we, I would straight away. I was like, "You'll, you'll do for me." And he's been with us ever since. Um, and I keep on saying it. My missus has got something for him. So you know. Oh yeah, I forgot a, about that. On he's just uh, an, he's, yeah, he's just an absolute uh, legend. So, so if you're I listening, you, Sam, um, you said that on Saturday night, didn't you? But I forgot, <laughs> I've forgotten a lot from Saturday night. Saturday night. Sunday night. See what I mean? I don't know what day yeah. it is. No. <laughs> I, had the, I had I had the I had the proper fear, you know, on uh on Monday morning. You know, when you wake Did up, you, and you don't yeah, you yeah. don't want to look at your phone. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to see what kind of uh, notifications you've got. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's one of them. It's horrible. So yeah. So if if again now, a message. If you're listening, Sam, Kino, uh, Ben, or Ash, love to get you on the podcast, and we'll have a proper chat. Um, because you've been here for a long time and. Yeah, just just to immortalise you because you're absolutely amazing. Um, Palmer as well against Halifax, he was just heading it back every single time when nothing got past him. I don't think. In fact, the only the only time that we were in any sort of danger was when I think Keno slipped. Did he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
No, Ash, um, Ash was great. He's like a, a magnet in, in the box, really. Isn't he? Every time he's the best centre back aerially in, in the National League, I think. And uh, yeah, I think he, he plays. I mean, he plays really well alongside Keno as well. I think the two really suit each other, and that obviously just comes from experience of playing with each other. But I think obviously Keno came in for Chesterfield, and um, yeah, just seemed to settle Ash down a little bit after. Obviously, he made a mistake against Boreham Wood, but really seemed to settle him down after that. And then the, those last three games, he was. He was right back at it. Yeah, that's <clears throat> a lot of that's testament to the manager and the and the staff in it because in the in the in your pre match and po- well in the pre match and post matches, Challen has always said we just need to get back to what you know part of this blip. We just need to get back to ourselves, you know, our own identity, and we did that in the last two matches, didn't we? Um, and some. Yeah, yeah, and credit to him for making big calls because he uh, he obviously he, he, he dropped Quiggs and went for a. a a box uh, midfield four of Collar, Sarsovic, Cannon, Crowsdale, and it just seemed to bring that that control back for us a little bit. And um, yeah, no, he got he got it, uh, he got everything bang on in that last week, and that's, that's all, all you can ask him to do. And so, yeah. um, obviously, Will coming back in was was huge. He looked a bit rusty against Torquay, but still the impact was there. The driving runs from midfield, and um, again on Sunday he looked, looked back to his best, didn't he? So yeah. Yeah, and even I think he, he made good decisions even with the forced changes that he had to make. Um, I think K- John Kerry said last week we lost Sarsavik for f- three and a half games, he said, well, nearly four games essentially. Um, and he's a massive miss. So, um, quick word on Sarsavik is he decent? Well, well, on a scale of Boone up to Francis, where would you rate him? Francis on Francis's shoulders, <laughs> right? With, 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 with how, he, how, how much he makes us tick. This, yeah, uh, absolute class, and he, he's one of them. Is what that's what I like. I like a number ten, where you can look at him and think, "Oh, he's he's not doing out him," and then all of a sudden he's just got acres of space, and it and he's driving forward. It's it's it's, it's, it's the kind of thing that at the top level you saw it with uh, Mesut Özil. He used to get a lot of criticism for doing exactly that, for kind of like sauntering around and looking like he's doing nothing, and got like, but. Yeah, just so, so class. I mean, he, he started the move for the for the first goal on Sunday, didn't he? He was the one who played it to Collar, and then it was onto Madden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's a class above. I think when in terms of our in possession plays, he's he keep he, like you said, he makes us tick, keeps us going, makes the right decision on the ball every single time, picks up those pockets of space. He's he's such an intelligent footballer, and uh, um, as someone who lives in Bolton, I can uh, I probably appreciate him a little bit more than. And others as well. So, yeah. Uh, uh, my friend David Goodman says, uh, so "Is a Rolls Royce of a player, absolutely." And that, that that's coming from a Spurs fan who's been convert, who's getting converted mm-hmm. to County. He doesn't he doesn't know it's get he's getting converted. It's happening gradually. Is it? But it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's it's coming now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's that's why he he felt very at home. Like when we, when we had the defeats to like Yeovil and Grimsby and Wrexham. It was a it was a very Spursy couple of weeks that was. <laughs> so, uh, I don't I don't think he knows what to do with himself now. <laughs> We've won it. Got another one here. Um, sorry, go on. I was just going to say there's so many players in this squad that you know when we do step up to League Two next season we'll be able to, to take it in the stride. So yeah, well that well that that's kind of what I was going to lead on to because we had a comment here. Whitfield is Whitfield good enough for League Two? Now we didn't we've not really seen Whitfield. Towards the back end of the season, I think last time he played properly was Bolton away two two. I think I know he's played in the um, in the FA Trophy, which we don't have to play in again. <laughs> um, <laughs> but is what do you think? Do you think he's good enough for League Two? Yeah, w- Wits is great. I think Wits was just a uh, it was just unfortunate circumstances. Really, I think under under Simon, he was probably one of our well, he was one of our best players. Yeah. Um, uh, he, he was in top form at the time that Charlie came in. Obviously, he scores at Bolton, gets injured celebrating, um, and and since then we switched back to the back three. And then by the time he came back from injury, there was not really that that position for him in that system, really, because he's he's, yeah. he's a winger at the end of the day. Um, at Bolton, we played a four four two. He played on the left of that, and that's probably where he's at his best. Um, yeah, I think he's, he's I think he's more than capable of playing in League Two. Um, if we if we want to play a system that plays with wingers. Obviously, Challenge, I think he said when he first came in that his preferred formation is 4-3-3. Three, three. 
if that's something we see next season, then you know Whitfield, Ollie Crankshaw, Paddy Madden, that's that's a pretty formidable front three for me. Yeah, I I couldn't believe that Crankshaw was so, so young. I don't I don't know why yeah. I, I envisaged him being late twenties for some reason. Um, oh, did you but, remember him playing against us for Curzon? No. Did he? And, uh, yeah, he, he, he was one of he's, he's aging well, Crankshaw. He, <laughs> he, he had a bit of a Peter Crouch thing, you know, where he looked really weird in his teens. Look, that's me. That's me saying that. Right, right, right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So he's, he's, he's kind of got that thing. Where, where, but yeah, he's, he's, he's aging very. He's a very handsome young lad. As, 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 well, we're talking about handsome young lads. Uh, has anyone seen the Selvin Hales lap dance? Yes. That's done stuff to me. I'm, I'm, <laughs> tell you, oh God! Well, South of Wales just seems like an absolutely. It looks like he's off his rocker, but the kind of the kind of player yeah. that you want in the in the in yeah. the squad. I loved his interview with John Kevin after the game, where he said, "Oh, I'm just gonna get a gonna have a few drinks at home and get a Domino's." <laughs> Three hours later, <laughs> someone's on the roof of the Albert. Yeah. <laughs> He's, he's he's bonkers, isn't he? Um, but as you say, he's exactly the kind of character you want around the squad. So bubbly and energetic, and um, I think it was tougher in the last couple of weeks, um, out being injured and, and missing yeah. out. And you yeah. saw how much we missed him as well. Yeah. Um, but that, that's why we, you know I, we were trying to keep him as involved in possible with like the, the media stuff, the TikTok. We got him on the radio for a game just to just to keep him around. It. He, he he loves that kind of thing. So um, yeah, no, he's great and. As you say, he was, he was a massive miss on the right hand side in the last few weeks. Although uh, Elliot Newby did did exceptionally there when he went in, to be fair yeah. to him, and Sam before him. Just yeah. just to just to pick on the up, up on some technicalities and aesthetics that I love about the way that South Wales plays football. I don't know if you've noticed when he's running with it down the right, he leads with his left, left foot on some on some occasions, and I think that's yeah. beautiful because yeah. that just says to that defender that's that's, that's tracking him, shit, I don't know where he's going to go. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's one uh, I think it was Notts County at home where he comes in on his left foot and then just pings a perfect ball over to Paddy Madden. Just yeah. he's so capable on both feet, isn't he? Yeah. So really. excited to see see these players in the football league next season. Just it's yeah, I just oh can't yeah. wait. I know, yeah. I know. I've got nothing tonight, Russ. I've, I've just got nothing, mate. I know, I know, it's fine. You're, you're lucky I've turned up, mate. It's not <laughs> I never thought I'd get excited at the prospect of the Papa John's trophy, but I, I can't wait. You know, the Carabao Cup, you know, these things. Well, that, the, I, will, I won't be, be uh, I, I shan't be going to the Papa John's trophy. I'm going to exercise my right to boycott it. Okay, why? Yeah, because I, I don't agree that Premier League under 23 teams. I didn't agree when it started. And then I listened. To, yeah, if, if you don't fancy boycotting it, just listen to Swerving the Checker Trade by Half Man Half Biscuit, which is probably the greatest love song. Not you, Liam, because you don't like music. It's all right, it's fine. <laughs> Unfortunately, you don't know what I do. But um, no, I, I, we're on FIFA as well. As, yeah, uh, yeah. As yeah, yeah. Point out. That is, that's uh, that's some good uh, good content coming up. For next season, I, I can do a bit of a FIFA Ultimate Team as county. I can I can do the weekend league with the county team and get battered by a lot of fourteen year old kids. So that'll be fun, won't it? Can we yeah. can we get an official esports team going? Oh, I'm that, sure, that's, I'm that's sure some youngsters are going to do that. Yeah. No, I'm do. I want to do it. I want to oh, shake yeah. it up and do it. Yeah, yeah. I want to just turn up next to all these like twelve year old kids and just like, yeah, I'm I'm the daddy. I'm doing it. I was going to come to um, what to look forward to in League Two later in a bit more depth. Um, because do you remember, Nick, when we went up from the National League North to the National League? And I think we were more excited about squad numbers. Than that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Simple pleasures. Um, I was gutted when we, obviously, we finished third last season. I was gutted when I found out we weren't going to be in the Tunnock's Wafer Scottish Cup or whatever. It yeah, was. I was, yeah. 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 I was well up for that. So, I'm really hoping they bring the Anglo-Italian Cup back in time for us to get in the championship. That'd be good. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, but th yeah, three national cup competitions, though. And we don't have to qualify for any yeah, of them. Exactly, exactly. yeah. yeah. And, yeah. You know, I know what you mean about the Papa John's trophy. I mean, even even football manager hates it, doesn't it? You always get promoted and then it's like a record low attendance for your first um, yeah. Yeah, Papa yeah, John's yeah. game, like 800 turning up and... <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. funny because it was it was it was never like that before, was it? It was it was it, it was lower attendance. There were a lower lower attendance, but not like three figures, yeah, like some clubs have been getting. 
they've killed that competition, haven't they? They really have. Yeah. The group stage thing is just yeah. Fine. Why didn't didn't need it, did it? But mm. there you go. Let's win it anyway. Yeah, well, 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 so, yeah. yeah, might as well. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Tick tick the box off. We've not won it, have we? So we might as well beat City under twenty threes in the final. Yeah. I think under twenty three, isn't it? I don't even know who's in it. Who's, who's in it? The yeah. Euro- European club. Yeah. Is it the European clubs or what? I don't even. It's Man. most Premier League clubs. I don't. I don't think it's all twenty, but it's most Premier League clubs. I think. I think there's a few because of the number of spaces that there is. Because it's what is it forty? So it's forty eight teams, isn't it? In it plus. So it'll be. It's probably 14, 14 Premier League teams. I think sixteen. Whatever takes it up to sixty four from forty eight. <laughs> Quick maths. Uh, it's been a long 16, week. 16. 16 of the 20 then. Oh no, because yeah, some so. okay, right. I'm sure do you know what we'll do when we have our when we do our joint podcast with the Oldham lads from Push the Boundary? And we, they and can we tell will, us all that, yeah. They can tell us, yeah, because we're gonna swap notes, basically. Yeah, <laughs> cultural exchange. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sure I'm sure they're I'm sure they're listening back to this. Um back to the players then, just back to South the Males, actually. I heard something that I kind of wanted just to just to ask you about because he was injured towards in the season and I know other clubs were sniffing not maybe not this season maybe last season do you think that that means we'll keep him for longer because I think he's got potential to go I think West Brom were, were sniffing at one point were they or have, or have I made that up but he, he's got the potential to move on does this mean that in a weird twist of fate we can keep him for longer uh, I, I wouldn't worry too much about what you read on Twitter there's been some right shite on that <laughs> <laughs> but, but um yeah i think i think the thing i think we're okay for now because i think a lot of clubs a lot of clubs higher up the football pyramid don't actually trust the data that comes out of the national league so take ryan rydell for instance you know i think a lot of clubs will look at that and look at the assist and the numbers that he's producing and be interested but i think they'll wait and see can he do it in the football league is he doing it so if we're at the top end of league two next season i think that's when you know, it's natural that interest will come from other clubs. You know, the, the way the players are performing, it, it, it's it's going to happen. But luckily for us now, we're in a, a position where we, you know, we're, we're in a strong position because we don't need to to sell players to, to raise funds or anything like that. So we want yeah. to sell players on, on our terms, really. Um, just look at the comments. We've got um, we've got a quiz question. But first, this quiz question is quality. And speaking of quality, we're going to remind you that this week's podcast is sponsored by Arcade Wow, Stockport's very own manufacturer of premium quality retro style video arcade machines for the home and or business, which come with over 15,000 games, including classics like Mortal Kombat, Space Invaders and Street Fighter. Hadouken! That's what County said. That's what County said to non-league. They said Hadouken to non-league. I don't even know if that, that might be Streets of Rage. I don't know. I'm too old. You can see all their arcade machines and even a range of visits to their showroom at arcadewell.co.uk or see the link in the description on our YouTube page and contact Arcade Well for details of your £149 discount, courtesy of us at the Scarf Bagara War. And they will be also sponsoring this quiz question that I believe you've got for us, Liam. Sam, Sam Burns weighed in. Said Liam's dying to ask his quiz question of which two sides we'll play next season that we've never played before. Do you know what? I was going to ask you that at one point as well. So, yeah. Um... <laughs> oh, Crawley. Correct. Um, Crawley and AFC Wimbledon. There you go. You got it a lot quicker than Sam did. Yeah. yeah. Philip Lloyd said Wimbledon. That's wrong. Yeah. That's wrong. It's AFC oh, Wimbledon, Phil. AFC, so get, get your facts Wimbledon, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you know, I was on the pitch after the game on uh, on Sunday, and I thought absolutely nothing can can burst my bubble here. Like I'm on such a high, and I go on Twitter and see Crawley Town say, "See you next season." <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, I, I want to go back to Curzon. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers, lad. <laughs> yeah. There is, there is. Oh, there's loads of mileage in that though, isn't there? Because there's, there's there's a lot of teams up there that you think I'd rather be. You'd rather it sounds. You'd rather Chesterfield, Grimsby, Notts County. Oldham, Scunthorpe, be there. Are we, be, are we just being nostalgic, or is, is, is does everybody oh, no, share that's, that? That's true. But it's, it's kind of a horrible thing because it's like even like all the playoff teams, apart from Solly Hull, are the type of teams that should be in the football league. But it'll be so funny if Solly Hull win it, won't it? It'll just yeah. be absolutely hilarious. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd quite like Halifax to do it myself, just for the whole yeah. Warby thing, and you know, yeah. I think we're over on Club, we've done a very good job. And they're also a club that if they go up, you, in no disrespect, you wouldn't think they'd be 
challenging at the top end of League Two. Mm. Whereas obviously if Wrexham came up, you'd imagine they'll invest a lot heavily again and be be up there again. So yeah. from a selfish point of view. Um yeah, no, I mean it's a few weeks ago, like Sam and I were looking at like the relegation battle in League One. And it was between like Gillingham and Fleetwood. And we we're like, oh, wouldn't mind Fleetwood going down because it's a bit more local. And yeah. but then we turned around and said, Look, I, to, well, I think I turned around and said, I've played Gillingham away 46 times if it means we go up. Um, just being back in the football league, I, I don't care who we play. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, we've got crew to play, haven't we? We've got Doncaster, Gillingham, yeah. AFC Wimbledon. They've come can, we just, can we just move back to crew a second? Because I've got a lot saved up for them. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of stuff kind of and then, and then I watched um, bring it down a bit but I watched Floodlights on BBC last night yeah so that's got me even more angry at them so yeah well it's nice I remember I was uh, I remember I was going down at crew I was there and I remember I was singing to them that they'll be there when we get back and it's it's taken a bit longer than we thought but mm. here they we are, are. they are so yeah. yeah 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 and it's interesting what have they done in that time I don't think they've done anything have they no, just d- denied that any, any wrongdoing <laughs> has happened and, and just, just let a lot of people suffer from post-traumatic stress and not helping at all. Um, and on that note, if everybody could like the show, uh, we got over 140 <laughs> last week, which is really, really good. Um, so if the 129 people that are watching could like the show, that would be really good. And subscribe if you haven't already. Um, and you can well, get not, not just the 129 who are watching now, also oh, the, yeah, like, everybody, the other yeah. 1,380 who watch later. Yeah. Um, and don't forget all these teams that we play next year, because in League 2 and the ones above, they have more content creators, like, like one for each club. So we're going to be have more opposition views and things like that. So that's, that's something to look forward to. Because we, we've been retained, haven't we, Nick? Yeah, yeah. No, no, no deal though. But I think I might no. just let it run down and then move on a Bosman. I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to move over to the Fylde podcast because they're they're coming to the football league as well, aren't they, Fylde? So they said. So I'll, I'll just jump that, over to theirs. Seeing that result made that day uh, just that little bit sweeter. Just like yeah, yeah. yeah. Top, if if only West Ham could have held on as well, yeah, it would have yeah. been like the perfect day. Lou, Lou Reed would have risen from his grave. Like, yes, that was the perfect day. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, go on. I was just gonna say, what what grounds everyone looking forward to to going to? The oh, most? that's and a really good question. Of that. That's the sport of habit, but yeah, I mean the one the one for me. I've been a few times. I've been. I think I've been five times. It's Bradford City away. Same, you know, same. It's, it's a it's a fantastic ground. Um, it's it's arguably sort of lower Premier League Championship yeah. uh, quality, and. It just, well, I think for that one, because we because we've been playing Bradford Park Avenue, and I've always thought, I've always maintained we shouldn't be playing Bradford Park Avenue. It should be Bradford City. So that's the one I'll be looking out for. Bradford brackets City. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Liam? Uh, Bradford was definitely up there. Um, Tranmere was the other one. You know, yeah, I've not been Tranmere. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, don't know. Um, I'm quite happy with the day out, day out on Birkenhead. Um, yeah, Doncaster, I know. And Wimbledon as well. I'd like to. I've kind of followed the whole AFC Wimbledon Phoenix thing like since the start, so it's kind of nice to go to the new stadium. Although I hear it's not not the best, but it'd be nice to like kind of see where that story's kind of ended and, and what yeah, have you. Yeah, places like Leighton Orient as well. You know, just just proper football yeah. grounds. You know, yeah. it's. Uh... I know there's been a few this year, but um, it's kind of like you go to Knox County in the league and you kind of like realise, like when we first came up, it was our first away game, weren't it? Um, when we got promoted from the north, Knox County yeah. away, and it was just yeah, like, going, like well, this is what we've been missing. Yeah. So, bring it all on, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. There's loads of ones coming through on the chat, actually. So, Bradford, Hartlepool, Doncaster, um, Walsall again, rather than driving past it, you know. Um <laughs> Carlisle, Hartlepool, yeah. Hartlepool, yeah. No, Car- Carlisle, Hartlepool's going to have some needle to it in it. Yeah, yeah, big yeah. time, big time. What? How are we feeling about the playoffs at the moment then? Because it's Northampton, Mansfield, Port Vale, and Swindon. I don't know about you, but I'd, I'd rather see Mansfield and Port Vale stay down, and one of the other two go up. And yeah, like Swindon go up, and 
Yeah. 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 Let's Swindon and Northampton go up. Uh, preferably Swindon, actually, out of out of all of them. Yeah. But Port Vale and Mansfield uh, could be fairly decent away days. But obviously, there's, there's the the history of Port Vale anyway. Yeah. From a it's purely selfish conversations, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I mean, from a purely selfish point of view, I've been to Port Vale and I've been to Mansfield. I'd rather I've not. I've never been to Swindon and uh, Northampton. Yeah, missing out. No, it's been, and do you know what? I, I, got, I, re, I totally regret it because when we were in the league, you just take it for granted, don't you? Yeah, I'm never going to take it for granted again. You know, um, so that's why I'm so so glad that we've gone up um, because I'm just going to go to all the grounds that I didn't go to before and just and just see them. Um, but yeah, yeah, you can just imagine it. David Wright, um, friend of the friend of the show, uh, Hartlepool first game of the season. That'd be great, wouldn't it? Hartlepool away, maybe. Uh, yeah. It's going to be like Crawley away, isn't it? Or did, did Fleetwood come down? No, Gillingham. Gillingham, oh, Gillingham. Gillingham it was yeah. in the end. Oh, yeah, it's going to be Gillingham away. There you go. That's yeah. that done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, no, it'll be Gillingham away on the, on the first Tuesday night, won't it? Or oh, the, the first Tuesday night game with Gillingham away. And Hartlepool away is going to be the Tuesday before Christmas as well. Calling that now as well. Again, um, yes. But I've, I've, I've got a feeling... Well, well, we're on uh, predictions and things. First round of the... Coca-Cola Cup, as it should be still called. That's, that's what I'm going to be calling it. You're going to get really wound up by me. If we have a run <laughs> in it again, if we get to like the semi-finals again, you're going to be so pissed off at me calling it that every week. But um, you're yeah, gonna, you're going to be you're going to be you're going to be going around the cheese and handing out leaflets for vouchers for the next round, aren't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Take one, pass them along. <laughs> um, no, um, I've, I've, we're going to we're going to beat Derby. In the first round, and then we're going to have like a Premier League club, a, a lower Premier League club second round. I can feel it. United, Although Ever- e- Everton, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, they're not. They're not going to be in Europe, yes. are they? Most likely, <laughs> yes. So they'll be in round two. But that's it. There's that, that potential now to play a big boy. We always have to like wait for the FA Cup and go through like sixty-two rounds of it before we yeah. could have a chance. But now it's like. Yeah, I mean, Ever- 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 Everton will be in the second round of the League Cup. Yeah, we, we could be playing Everton like end of August. Or even, you know, like a, a good championship side in the first round. So, you know, you can get a really good draw early on, can't you? It's just, like you say, I'm just not going to take anything for granted. It's it's quite moving when you see a lot of, you speak to a lot of the younger fans as well that just uh, can't remember the last time we were in the Football League and mm. experiencing all this for the first time. And yeah. um, it's brilliant. I think mean, that really hit home for me when, um, when we played Bolton, because I know for, like for you guys, obviously, like you, you remember, was being in the same league as as Bolton and, and beating them. But for for a lot of fans, this was like this was like a massive cup final for them, kind of thing. So, um, yes, yeah, it's, it's great, great for the uh, the younger fans as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we've not mentioned a few actually. Rochdale. I said, I've said, I said, like months ago, I'd give me right arm to play Rochdale away. You're not having me right arm now, but we're going to be playing Rochdale away. No, no, I want it. <laughs> I want it. I've, I've got something I want to do with a picture I've got of Macaulay Salvin Hales and your hands. Very handy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Roch, Rochdale's good for me as well because I, I can like there's a, there's a tram stop about ten minute walk from my house, so I, I can get the tram to Rochdale, can't I? You're yeah. still on the Salem Hills thing, aren't you, mate? Yeah. yeah, you're still in my head. It's still in my head. Um, yeah, someone's just called it before. I can't remember what it is, but Roch- it's going to be Rochdale on Boxing Day, isn't it? No, but they don't do that in the. Do they not do league. that? Do they not do don't that? think no. No, no. It's it's a ve- that's the best thing about non-league. I'd say that the uh, the festive fixtures. I think. I think we can be. Yeah. Can, can we? Yeah, uh, right. We should put a vote out before the. We're going to have a couple of weeks off after tomorrow night, aren't we, Russ? We'll tell yes. you more about tomorrow night later. Yeah, but, uh, yeah we're, going to, we're going to have a few weeks off. But when we come back over pre-season, that can be a bit of a a way yeah. to box it off. The yeah. best, the best things about non-league. Yeah, yeah. We don't yeah, need but... the worst. Um, them. I don't know. I mean, we could probably let's have a chat about it. But yeah, definitely, we'll do that. We'll put a vote out and stuff about memories of non memories. What are of non-league? And we'll get Dave Espley to do a little. Yeah. Oh, they were thing. dark. They were right. They were right. Fucking dark them days. <laughs> <laughs> But that's it, and I, I tweeted it as well, and I'll say it again just to just to draw a you know my my line underneath it. Club secure under stock, grounds is secure with the council and its two hundred and fifty year lease back in the football league. They're the three. They were they were they were my three 
ticking the boxes. And that they're the three things that make me really emotional when I think about it because of of what we've been through and um, and what all those day, you know days of late nights and things at the co-op and all that malarkey that I don't want to bring it down on this uh, on this podcast. Yeah, what but... can we? Um, well, well, we, we kind of like before we move on from the whole like EFL discussion. Uh, what's the streaming thing? Doing it? Will we? Will we be an I follow club, or will we be one of the few who kind of blaze our own trail? Do you reckon? Uh, we've not had that conversation yet. We need to look into it. Mm-hmm. I think that the, there are issues around I follow. I think I think yeah. there's a lot of the, the clubs higher up the pyramid are pulling out of it at the minute. Yeah. So uh, we're going to look at it properly. If, if we feel we can do a better job ourselves, then we obviously will do. Um, yeah. We did a pretty Sorry, good then. streaming last time. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, but um, we'll, we'll we'll look into it. And but um, the last few days have been more more partying and less uh, less planning. So yeah, yeah it, it's just that uh, that's that's the one thing I've seen the most of actually about the AFL. People saying, "Oh, what what's happening with streaming and stuff like that." So now yeah. we, we've we've mentioned it, so people people know we've mentioned it, and people know it's. It, it's in the it's on the agenda. It's on the agenda. Yeah, no. yeah. The agenda. yeah. Let's like Silomas, friend of the podcast. Any update on the ground plans being released? Announcing moving to a Cat Three Academy status. Let's just let the dust settle. Let's have a couple of weeks. Let's just have a couple of weeks of just chill and just enjoying stress free playoffs and stuff. It, I'll, I'll knock. <laughs> it was the day after the game, and it, it was, I go on social media. It's like season tickets. When's the kit launch? <laughs> I know, I know. Everything now, infinite content. Everything now. That's what. Yeah. That's what it is. I, uh, <laughs> I had to sit down for the second half on Sunday. I, I didn't have to sit down because I was like, that. I'm, I'm not going to get through the night here because it's just. I was. Like, we, we've been saying for quite a few weeks, we it's taking a taking it out of us. We're absolutely, yeah. absolutely shagged. <clears throat> hence, yeah. hence, us having a couple of weeks off. But um, yeah, yeah, it's just. Everyone, well, that's it. There's so much new stuff that everyone's like, I want all the new stuff now. It's like, just bang yeah. on. But you, right. know, do, do you know what? Do you know what, though? We, we, we I'm, I'm exhausted by it all. But, and we just, all we do is a, is a podcast on a Wednesday. Yeah. Right? Liam and the team and the lads and the players, how, how exhausted was they must be? I know it's different for us. We're fans and, and we have a different sort of, it takes up a different mental sort of aspect to us. But I think everyone's just exhausted, aren't they? Yeah, and look, I'm knackered. But um, like from the media team point of view, you know, we're also we're, we're just as emotionally invested in it as you guys. We are fans at the end of the day, and uh, yeah, it's been a long season. Um, I'm not sure how Sam Burns got through it. To, to be honest, he's gone through like it's like the seven stages of grief over the last six weeks. It was like first it was like denial, then acceptance, and then all, all of that. He's gone through the mill. Um, yeah. But, um, Worth every second of it. Worth every second of it. I um, I, I was the last one to leave the, the party on Sunday. I was the last one to leave on Monday as well because um, I remember I was I was ill for, for the the celebrations in 2019. So I've been saying to myself all season, if we if we go up, I'm not going to miss a single second of it. And uh, mm. yeah, I've not. I've not yeah, I've, this is it. I've um, I've not even had time to sit down and and digest it all yet and go through social media and, and go through all the reaction to it because it's just been. A blur. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, when, when, when will you take stock of it all? I get, uh, if you're like me, I mean, I, I don't really think I've took stock of it all yet. I'll probably just break down and have a cry to myself at some point. But is that the same for you? Yeah. Yeah. I, I am going to at some point, maybe at, at the end of the week and just, just take a uh, sit down and just appreciate everything that's happened because it's been a long year. I need a holiday. I definitely need a holiday. Maybe after that. Um, yeah, I just I, I, I can't find the words for it. Really, it was it's yeah. been the, 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 the Sunday and the Monday were the, probably the two best days of my life. Yeah. So um, I'm sure it was the case for for a lot of people. You know, one yeah. of my best memories, you know, um, on the Sunday outside of the Prince Albert, just throwing Macaulay Salvamales around while singing singing his song with him and throwing beer all over each other. It was it was great. It was great, wasn't it? And it said a lot about the lads and about Charlie that they went over to the pub and wanted to, to go yeah. over and enjoy it with the fans because it was a free bar at Edgeley Park. They could have just stayed for that all night, but uh, they wanted to, to get over to the Albert. And uh, it's nearly free in the Albert, isn't it? But, um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it was a special couple of nights, wasn't it? Yeah. No, but you deserve it as well because I... I... I saw you on Sunday. Oh no, the parade! It was the parade, and you were still 
you were still like buzzing around doing stuff, you know, speaking to people, going doing something else. I, you know, let's say I watched you for ages. I'm not, you know, not playing for out, but I saw you doing that. And I thought you, you're not even switched off yet. Do you know yeah, what I mean? I'm so doing the same thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no uh, this is it it was uh and i was i can't tell you how hung over i was doing all that as well um but, <laughs> yeah 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 but um yeah it'll be a, a couple of a couple more days of, of work and then i'm gonna keep obviously i'm gonna keep milking every drop out of this title win on on social media and all of that so yeah um yeah it, it, monday was difficult because everything obviously had to be pulled together quite quite last minute but um to be fair, that the club were great because they made sure all the all the staff, like all the ticket office staff and everyone, the club shop were, were able to go to the civic reception at the town hall and, and be on the bus. So that was a, a really nice touch from from the club. That was great. Yeah, good. Yeah, and and just to say as well, I know you're you're the admin on Twitter. Um, I absolutely trust you not to get salty and not to be embarrassing because. Like like some of the other Twitter accounts admins have done for the thingy, so yeah, more power to you. That tweet, like you said before, we said before, you know, that was that was a great tweet at the end of uh, last week. Yeah, football and... of National League. What I, I what I always try and do is, is save my. my I'm, I'm always subtle with my shit, Alzer. I'll always be subtle with it, <laughs> and I wait until it's a done deal. A lot of clubs go early with it and then end up looking yeah. at Chesterfield, but um. I, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll wait until it's done, and then I'll, and then I'll yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's true, I mean, special mention for Chesterfield as well. I mean, they this this season for me will always be. Re- I'll always remember it for probably Chesterfield and Wrexham. I think um, it's funny how Chesterfield stopped creeping up Chelsea's ass once the uh, the war in Ukraine kicked off. Isn't it <laughs> weird that. <laughs> just all of a sudden, yeah. it's like, no, we didn't play you. No, what you're about. <laughs> It's mad, isn't it? Like, I think we finished 20 points above Chesterfield. Yeah, mad, we're, isn't it? It's mad, we're like 12 or 13 points behind them at one point. It's just just, just incredible. I know they've had their injury problems, but... Um, well, they're still the best team by a country mile, aren't they? Yeah, yeah obviously. Uh, it, yeah. This is it. It's, it's, it's staff comments like that, and it's not just in terms of, of social media. It, you know, It's about me. I'm in charge of making sure that the players aren't coming out with that stuff like that in the press as well. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and to be fair, I think we're lucky with Sam because I, I think if someone if, if someone said a comment like that to Sam, I think he'd run it by me and say, "Well, I'm not going to put this out because you're you're only going to end up looking stupid." Yeah, but that's a, that's an interesting point though. Do I mean you can't vet everything the players put out, so they must be the players must be good at what they what they can, not can and can't put out, but you know in terms of their own media presence, they must be pretty switched on. Yeah, they are. They are. They're they're professional group of lads but at the same time I think the message comes down from from Simon Wilson and, and Dave Challoner as well in terms of like this this is our message you know we're taking yeah. one, one game at a time nothing's won yet uh you know and that was the message we just tried to convey to all the lads throughout throughout the season really and uh so they, did, they did a good job especially yeah. when because there's a lot of noise there was a lot of noise coming from Wrexham you know Ben Tolder saying County are going to slip up we're going which we did but we're going to be there to take advantage which they didn't um, but there was a lot of obviously they have access to a, a platform with their Hollywood interest that, that we don't and obviously they yeah. used it to try and put the pressure on which fair enough um, but we were pretty clear that we just wanted to, to keep our heads down and just go about our business and, and do our talking on the pitch Yeah, more power to us for for, for staving it off really you know, keep keeping what it Champions okay. doing it yeah. Champions oh, yeah. just ignore yeah. the noise and get on with it and, and yeah. then we'll sing Rex and get battered on the parade bus yeah, yeah, yeah. Quite, yeah. yeah. really quite, annoyed. Yeah. Well, well, we're well, we're on Wrexham because we might never get to talk about them again. Because <laughs> give it a couple, of, give it a couple of weeks, we may be confirmed to be a division above them next season. I mean, at the moment, we are a division above them, but that might only be a couple of week thing. Did you see the the Tory MP for Wrexham in Parliament? Athletic talking it? about Wrexham Athletic, yeah. Yeah, yeah so. that, 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 there's a reason we don't d- tend to do politics on the show, uh, yeah, and, just... and, and that is why because they just don't mix. I just watched a video of uh, Boris Johnson wishing Rangers well in the Europa League final tonight. It's just so cringy. He's obviously reading it off a script, and it's yeah, he's never heard of the Europa League before, and no, it's just um, no. you know, it, it, and it's funny in it because like footballers shouldn't get involved in politics, but obviously 
politicians can get involved in football whenever they want, can't they? So yeah. Anyway, I don't want to get into a debate about politics. No, that's no. no. So it's always, please, it's always, please it's don't. So, yeah. I was in <laughs> such a good mood, and now you've brought politics up, Ross. <laughs> I was going to say it's always you that brings politics into it. We very quickly oh. went from Wrexham to Boris Johnson, then didn't we? That was quite yeah, uh, yeah, quite weird, weird. But yeah, I mean, just I mean to cap off the season, definitely a special mention to Chesterfield and Wrexham. Any other teams you want to mention that that's that have been good or bad or indifferent to us in your media travels then who's been who who's your best away day in terms of how you got treated and and you know, that kind of thing uh the guys at Notts County are always very good obviously it's very much a football league set up there they're always really hospitable I mean Bolton away in the FA Cup was was great and Rotherham right um that's kind of like that was an eye-opener for me in terms of like right when we get back in the league these are the kind of things we need to be doing so that, that was yeah. quite helpful um in terms of the worst, I know you didn't ask me, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, <laughs> that was my good the next question anyway. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, and Ward are probably the worst because they... You have to pay. Yeah, you have to pay to film the game. And you have to pay to broadcast on radio. They're the only club I've come across that, that do that. And they do it because at the end of the day, they only send one or two media staff to away games. So it'll be like, oh, well, we're only, we're only going to let you have two in because we're only going to send two. So there's no ramifications, really. But, and Dover are quite difficult as well, just in general. But right. again, I, I don't think we'll ever play Dover again. So. No. Touch so FA Cup round one, Dover away. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can just, now you've said that, Liam, you can just imagine it go. Yes. Oh, no. I know. No, FA Cup round one, it is going to be like Dover or Brackley. I, I've got a feeling it's going to be Brackley away. I can just see it. After just finally being like, yeah, we don't have to go there again. And now, yeah, yeah it's, it's happening. Yeah. yeah that, that, that was making it worse. Um, obviously, when it looked like, we, you know, it might go down to the final day. It might not happen. I was looking in the National League North. I'm like, Brackley, top of the league. I was like, can't go there again. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I was looking at, I think, they, I think they conceded like 20 goals all season. Like 21 goals. Really? Like, like the country. Just unbelievable. Absolutely mad that. Yeah. Uh, James Somerset asked, what, what were Kings Lynn like? Because obviously you'd expect them to be kind of a uh, boring woodish, wouldn't you? Uh, to be fair, they're okay. I, you know, I think um, he's a bit of a pantomime villain, that, that Steve Cleave. He um, looks like one, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one villain, yeah. Uh, but, <laughs> but no, from a uh, from a media point of view, they, they were fine, to be fair. Uh, a lot of Sam Byrne got uh, abused by an LD fan um, <laughs> at Kings Lynn. So that was, that was quite an interesting one. But, what did he say to him? Well, obviously, um, the, the press box was full. So what they did was they just put me and John on the radio in the um, in the hospitality area directly next to the press box. Um, and she had got up early um, to, to leave at half time to go downstairs. And obviously, she was trying to force her way past us because we were on the corner. And Sam, she was the only one on the row. And Sam was like, oh, they're just finishing up on the radio. They'll be, they'll be done in a minute. And then she just started swearing and effing and jeffing at him and jabbing him and saying this young man is more disrespectful and he is though isn't he to be he, fair. He is, he's a shit <laughs> <laughs> um yeah special mention for is it boston away the assessor where's the assessor oh yeah yeah i wasn't, yeah. I wasn't actually there for that one but I, when i went to boston the year after yeah you can see what it's proper hostile because you're writing amongst the fans as well yeah. and hereford as well um, when we went to Hereford, in, I think it was two all. Um, when they scored a late equaliser, didn't they? And I think someone turned yeah. around and tried to grab Chris Ridgeway whilst he was live on the radio, and, and just so, yeah, yeah. Really, this, this was hostile Grim, Grimsby was quite hostile and Wrexham because they're the ones you, you're in the away end essentially, and you, you're surrounded by the fans directly behind you. They're the ones that can be quite uh, hostile at times, but you know it doesn't stop me and John from uh, shouting our heads off. No, good, good. Representing county, I like yeah. it. Yeah, um, and there'll be plenty more in League Two as well, where you'll be probably surrounded by, surrounded by him as well. So it's just going to get more intense, really, is it for you? I guess. Well, I don't know because yeah. some sometimes you, if it's really posh, you like Rotherham maybe, and you, you're away from everybody. Are you? You're a, you're in a proper media area. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was the same at Bolton. It was like Bolton's like right at the top of the stadium, so uh, you, you are just. And closed off. I mean, our press bench is quite good, to be fair, like that as well. It's, it's probably the best, the best press bench in the league by a country mile. 
<laughs> yeah. I'm, laughing at, I'm laughing at what you said and then laughing at what Sam no, Bird says. John, John, John did say that to her. He said, uh, <laughs> he said uh, we won't be here next year uh, and neither will you. <laughs> <laughs> And she thought she thought he meant she, he meant her ne- not being there next year. Well, I've, I've been saying this for weeks. There's there's nothing better than Sassy Sam Byrne and Sassy John Caron. Yeah. 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 I like it. Oh, just while we're on John Caron, I said I know he's on last week, but I said to you off early and just before we came on. Um the old, I've, I've, I've surprisingly I've not been really emotional about getting back to league, getting back to the football league. Until uh, dinner time today, when I was watching the highlights back, oh. and it was John commentating, and I started to well up at work, so I had to stop it <laughs> because I thought I'm, I'm trying to be professional at work here, you know. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah. Um, I, I, I think that. this this might be a bit controversial. To, to I think I think I think to some older fans anyway. Don't worry, I'm not going to do one of my Jimmy Savile jokes, Will. Just calm right, down. Good, good. Um, no, John. John and Richard Harnwell are like on on the same level for me now. Since since this since we've had kind of John talking us through non-league, yeah, he's yeah, he's he's, he's really really yeah, hello, I was, yeah. I was saying to him after the game on Sunday, you know, in, in 20, 30 years time, people will be listening back to that game on Sunday and listening to his commentary. Same for the Curzon Ashton game as well, and yeah. Well, that's been... already happened with the Curzon game. That I, I can tell you, that's all. That's already up there with. I've waited all my life for that. Yeah, I think, exactly. yeah, exactly. He's, he he captures the moment brilliantly, doesn't he? To be fair, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, he deserves it, and uh, yeah, he's actually uh, he's on holiday for the first few games of next season as well. He's a bit gutted about that. <sighs> oh. Should we step in, Russ? It <laughs> 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 was a nervous laugh. I just, uh, <laughs> You say that we've we've both done co-coms before. We've both done co. I yeah. did co-coms when we played uh, Solly Hull at home, and we got beat four 0 Kieran O'Hara was in net, and I did. I said two things. Where I I thought they were pretty funny. One was John Kip, The cross came in and it, it went into the net. You know, remember that one? The cross came in from yes. and it, Kieran O'Hara just yeah. missed it, and um, John Kieran went, "Oh, I think it's gone out for a goal kick." And I went, "No, John, it's gone in." Like that, dead, <laughs> dead pan, and he went, "Oh bloody hell, yeah!" And then he said later on in the game, he went, "Surely that was a professional foul." And I said, "No, John, it was a semi-professional foul." So, I'm d- so <laughs> this this is why everyone comes up to you and congratulates you for being the funny one on the show, Russ. You know, well, it's not, well, it's not forced with me, is it? You're all like scripting and trying to trying to be funny. I'm just, I'm just I'm not. Funny. Uh, nothing I say on air. None of my jokes on air are scripted. Uh, just, just, just letting people know how the sausages are made. I write the okay. intro before that. <laughs> Other than that, any, anything else that comes up is just what happens, happens. I mean, this, I'm absolutely steaming this week, I'll be quite honest with you. I had like a quadruple gin and lemonade as we're getting started. I've had a couple of beers. So <laughs> anything can happen tonight now. Do you want to lap dance for us? <laughs> Would you like me to dance for you? <laughs> um... Yeah, so uh, but, but, I mean, I'm, I'm, I want to ask John about that. Why, who books? Who in the football industry books a holiday for the first two weeks of the season? I don't. Shocking. It? I think, it, I think it's it's July, though, isn't it? Yeah, the season's July. So it's it off. Oh, oh now, does it? it? So, right. Yeah, um, so fair news. Yeah, it might be a case of uh, myself and Sam Burn guiding you through for a few weeks. So just stick with us, and uh, <laughs> he'll soon be back. Well, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure Sam will. Um, Disagree with me here, but I've heard his brother Jack do commentary, and he's pretty good. Yeah. To be fair, so maybe you should have a word and, and maybe get Jack doing it. I don't know. Maybe we should have a raffle. Well, the, the problem with me and Sam Byrne doing it is it's just going to sound like one continuous voice for the whole. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be like it's just you with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So we'll see. We'll see. It's going to be like some sort of cutaway to someone yeah. who's talking to themselves, isn't it? Yeah. For, for an hour and a half. You'll have a you'll have a week's worth of comments on the YouTube highlights, just saying, "Couldn't you have got a co-commentator? <laughs> <laughs> Could you not have got someone to join you?" <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, uh, anything else about being champions and not having to go through the playoffs and being in League Two next season? What else are we looking forward to? I can't wait to be on Sky Sports once. <laughs> That's gonna be, I'm gonna book the week off for that. 
<laughs> just that's that's a positive for the teams that go down, though, isn't it? Into the, into the national yeah. league, you get on more telly, don't you? Yeah, this is. I actually said to the guys at BT, it's probably the one the one thing in non-league that I, I won't miss in terms of like you're not going to be on telly nine or ten times a year like we were this year. So I know it, it can be a pain. It can be a pain for fans, and I totally get that um, in terms of like the changing kickoff times, but. It has been good to have counting on the telly most weeks, and the last few weeks. So, yeah, um, and I'm not going to speak for everyone, but I think for the majority of people that I saw giving their opinions, the the only real annoyance with the kickoff time change was for the Chesterfield thing when it was no one no one had a clue what was happening for for like a day or two. But other than that, yeah. it's all yeah. been well in advance, and it's it's decent coverage and what have you. It's I, I think the the punditry at half time and full time. Could could be better. I don't. Th- I don't think they do as much research as as you see at higher levels and stuff. But Chris Hargreaves has got the Yeovil job now, so it might improve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what, wasn't sorry. Wasn't a bit of Aaron McLean's uh, research um, looking at Jamie Willis's tweets about not being? Oh no, Hoodie's tweets about not being good in April or something. Yeah, yeah. And he, yeah. And he reeled that off. Yeah. yeah, and to be fair, he was right this year. Well, he was. Well, yeah, I know, it, yeah. <laughs> to, it should be fair to existence. <laughs> <I know. laughs> but to be fair, so Aaron McLean seems that I, I saw him interacting with fans on Saturday, like both before and after the game, and he, he seems like a top lad. McLean, yeah. like he just, yeah. I think he, he just seems like a football fan, like the rest of us. Yeah. that kind of knows, I, know I how it is. is. I think they quite enjoy it when everyone starts uh, slagging off Adam Perkle as well. I don't know why, yeah. but the, those that I was, um, I think it was the Bourne Wood game and Cheetah and was singing it before before the game and Matt Smith was just like pumping along. To it. <laughs> <laughs> Adam Perkle was a wanker they were singing and he was just like, <laughs> like that. So, fair enough. Yeah. yeah. Plus, as well, Aaron McLean, he, I think he goes on like content creator shows and things like that. So he's very, he's very sort of accepting of that. So that, yeah, fair dues. And he, I, I think he talks quite well. He, he popped um, up on S- Sid Freeman's video. Sid Freeman, new new friend of the show and uh, content creator extraordinaire. If you, if you don't know Sid Freeman, you, I think he's got about 8,000 views on his uh, match day vlog from this weekend. Oh, was he was he on Sid Freeman? I, I thought I knew he was on Luke's from Halifax. I didn't yeah. know he was on, I've not seen Sid Freeman. Every yet. everyone was on Sid Sid Freeman well, did a fan, well he does a fantastic job every week, but this yeah. one in particular was great. He just he, yeah, he got the players to like shout out his channel, got McLean nice. to do the same. Yeah, yeah, really good. Yeah, nice. I think it's up to about about seven seven thousand nine hundred views or something so far. Fantastic. Mm. Yeah, we do endorse what Sid Freeman does. So, and he's called Sid Freeman as well. I didn't think he was called Sid Freeman, but he is. That, that's the weirdest thing you've ever said, Ross. And that's saying something. Yeah, well, let's not go with the weirdest thing you've ever said. It's um, great that no, you yeah. said that it's such a growing thing that the, the fan content, the stuff, the, the work you guys do, the work that Sid does, it's 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 a massive thing at the minute, and it's only going to keep growing. So, keep doing what you're doing, guys. Honestly, it's. Uh... Well, so same to you because it it makes a difference having county fans doing the the official stuff like with yeah. yourself and Sam Burn. Like y- your passion kind of comes across, it shows, doesn't it? I think. And I, I, I honestly think. I mean, pe- people have joked about your t- your tweet and everything. Yeah, Halifax have a corner, no one cares. But that's just that's just spot. That that's the one thing that I've sent to people to tell them we're promoted. You know, mates have not spoken to for a while just to let them know. I'm just like, yeah, yeah, I've done it. That's that, that's that's the one figurehead. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even notice it had gone uh, viral until like the day after. To be honest, I was like, oblivious to it, and then I was like, "Wow, well, okay." Wow. I barely remember yeah. doing it, but um, <laughs> I throw away like, yeah. But um, yeah, no. As you say, I, I suppose I didn't. Re- I suppose when you look at it back, and it is like I say, the last one in non-league. It's it's quite a nice, nice way to go out, isn't it? So yeah, yeah. And just to just to coin a phrase, I think you're passionate and professional. Which the two go really, really well for a for a media team, all of you. So it's um, not blowing smoke at your ass, but it is. It's good. It's really, really good. Yeah, um, I, I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to take all the credit myself either, because you know there's a there's a really good team. It was this Carl, yeah. there's, there's the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jake, who does our graphic design, uh, Alice, who's our head of marketing, Theo, who does our CRM stuff. That you know, there's a really good good team that go into like producing what you see day to day, and then obviously you've got the match day media team, John, Dan. Mike Patch, uh, Sam. So yeah, there's a, there's a big group of lads, and we're all um, we're all wanting to take it to the next level again next year. So. Yeah. Yes, loving that. 
Oh, love it, loving, loving thinking about what's going to come from a from a media perspective. Um, yeah. Got rid of the list of names that I needed to mention now, so we'll, uh, we'll move on. Yeah, I suppose from our perspective, though, Nick, shout out to Pete who does all of our graphics. Yes, for the full season. Um, I've, I've 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 not got a, a full list, but um, just the the last season. So we've had so many guests. So yeah. Liam, you you've been one of our best guests. Thank you, Sam Byrne, John Kieran. Um, I'm just gonna pull names off the top of my head now. Dave Long, yeah, that's Samson. Will probably pocket join us. That's Samson, John Kieran. You mentioned him. Uh, Matt, Matt, Matt Blake, <laughs> Steve Bellis, Sam Walker, Gary Stopforth, Mike Flynn, Rob Britner, Ben yeah. Walker. Yeah, sorry if we've missed you. There's too many there's, to mention. There's so many. Like, we were Chloe, Chloe, Chloe Beresford, Chloe Beresford, Chloe Beresford, of course. Jordy Hatter, Jordy uh, Hatter, Jordan, Jonathan the Jordy Hatter, who's also got his own his own thing going on as well as being part of part of what we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah thank you, thank you so. I, I was I, I was very humbled on uh, that. Ah, oh, I, I wish we weren't recording live right now because that's exactly the type of thing that I'd edit out. But ah, oh, feel very humbled. No, it's, it's, very, it's very nice to see so many people coming up <laughs> coming up on on Sunday night in the pubs and stuff like that, and just saying like, "Oh, well done" and stuff. That was that was very nice, and we got some nice comments online, didn't we, Russ? Yes, and yes, very, we did. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, and and as well to our bloggers Adam Sundal and Aunt Sherat, who yes. do our and blogging it, for us, and everyone who who kind of bases the week around this since we've gone live. Everyone who kind of bases the the Wednesday night on what we're doing thank you all the people you know james somerset jamie willis mark brockbank phil panton who are constantly in the comments every week thank you yeah i'm, I'm sure you all won't mind if we have a couple of weeks off after tomorrow yes. i'm sure they'll all be all right about that won't we because i'm i'm done yeah yeah absolutely and as well we must say thanks to those opposition um pods that have come on as well Notts county yeovil uh, Rexham, the Phyllis and Devotion guys, we've got to know. Oh, I've got to know Tim really well. Um, yeah, just everybody that's come on, thank you very much. Luke, the 15 year old from last week, was ace, wasn't he? I mean, come on, yeah. that's always makes you feel old. That, yeah, absolutely. Um, what have we got for tomorrow then? I mean, we say we're gonna have a, have a break. Are we, are we, is it time to wrap up? Or is there anything else you want to talk about? Oh, well, 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 we need to oh. talk about what we're doing tomorrow for, at some point, don't we? We do. Liam, you, you just yeah. go on. Liam's, go on. Liam's got to play something more. I know, yeah. Come on. Yeah, sorry, I just, uh, obviously, we put the uh, the release list out today, so Liam Hogan. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um... Of course. <laughs> Uh, do we do we even support this club or what? You know, <laughs> right? Yeah, let's talk about that. <laughs> absolute Liam, Liam Hogan in particular, absolute credit to the club. I mean, I mean, he, what, was he the first signing in of the Stott era? I think Danny Lloyd. I think he was second. I think he was second. Yeah, yeah. So, so first permanent signing. Yeah, of the yeah. Era, I suppose. yeah. But yeah, the, the way the way he's always conducted himself, particularly last season when he clearly struggled off the pitch. He had clearly had issues off the pitch and everything. Uh, the, the way he came back and was so pivotal in the running, uh, the the way he's captain the club, you know, just absolutely fantastic. It's a shame to see him go, but I, th- I think he'll uh, he'll be a fantastic asset to someone else this season. I think next season yeah. in it's, whether in national yeah. league or higher. It's it's pleasant. it's the one side of the job that's that's quite difficult because you do mm-hmm. you do get attached to the lads at the end of the day. Yeah. You can't you can't look at especially with this group such a good bunch of lads. And um, I was speaking at Hogs on the phone before and. Uh, it is. It's, it's gut wrenching when they leave because you you know players are going to come and go. They're going to keep doing that, but you you can't help but get attached to them. But in terms of Hull, as I said to him, you know, only only two men in the last fifty five years have, have captained this club to a league title. So yeah. he should be incredibly proud of what he's what he's achieved at the club. Um, as you say, I know he had a difficult start to the season. A lot of players did, but the way he fought his way back into the team and and played such a key role in that that winning run we went on. Uh, I think it says everything about his, his character as a person, and uh, yeah, it'll, it'll definitely be a big miss to the club. Yeah, here, here, well said. Can't disagree with any of that. I think he's been brilliant. You know, the debut goal, I think, as well. <laughs> for me, for me, I'm not no no not disparaging any of the centre halves we had at the time, um, including Ash Palmer because Ash Palmer's great, obviously. But it felt like Hogan took us up a notch 
in terms of what yeah. a centre half is. I hope you know, and he, he, you know, definitely did that from my perspective. So, and, um, and he's, had, he's had as big an impact off the pitch as well. You know, the lads all look up to him. He's such a leader in terms of yeah. keeping the group together and keeping them going. He's been he's been a really good, as you say, fantastic captain. Everything you want from a captain. So, um, hats off to him and and going out as a champion. You know, what what, what better way to do it? Yeah, I think the way he spoke out about mental health and everything was absolutely fantastic as well. Just, yeah, like yeah. a proper leader. Yeah, this is it. His little things. I remember last um, at the back end of last season, all the players um, they took some money out of their their bonuses uh, and put it towards um, the club staff, like myself and the, the ticket office staff, and everything like that. And wrote, but and it was it was Liam's idea that to, to go out and do that and get all the players to on board with it. So. Um, little stuff like that go a go a long way to people yeah. finding things. Yeah, I think we've we've had about half a decade now of like not only having great players but great people as well, and it, it really shows. It does. It really does. It's fantastic. Massively, yeah. No, well said. Well said. Um, yeah, and the rest of the the rest of the retain list, um, and the the sort of the loans that have gone back and the ones that haven't been renewed. I don't think that for me there's no surprises in there. Um no. and I'm but I'm really, really pleased that Palmer, Hinchliffe, and Hippolyte are being offered yeah. new deals. Really, really pleased about that. Yeah, they all deserve it. I mean, what a revelation Miles has been. Oh, yeah. just been phenomenal. Yeah. So yeah, signing of the season, would you say? I, I think so, yeah. I think yeah, yeah. other than Chavana, but you know, no. Miles has been Yeah. Because uh, I think, you know, we all looked at it as a bit like, where does he fit in? Where's he going to play kind of thing when he came in? Everywhere. <laughs> Everywhere, yeah. Uh, and he's, gonna go, he's just grown into it, hasn't he? And got better and better. He's got the, the best first touch of any player I think I've seen in the National League. So silky, isn't he? Oh, so, oh. And, uh, and seeing it, seeing his reaction at full time and in the celebrations mm-hmm. after, you just thought, yeah, he belongs here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. He's one of us now. Yeah. Is that your who's, whose phone's going off there? Sorry, that's me. I'll shift it. Hang on. No, sorry. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean break it, but um, <laughs> um, yeah. Someone just mentioned there. Oh God, here we go again. What is it? Um, are we going to talk about the? Oh, here we go. Have we talked about the incomings, Chris? Ninety-two. We will talk about those when we come back, and we'll speculate about all that sort of stuff later on. Um, we're just talking about we're just having a celebration. Yeah. Yeah, we're celebrating the lads who've got us where we are tonight. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I wasn't. Yeah, really pleased with 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 the, with the work that's been done in terms of the retain and stuff like that. Not not surprised with any of those. I mean, if I had to be really critical, and I don't want to be, but I guess there's going to be there's going to be there's likely to be movement, isn't it, with the with the squad that are still contracted? That's just that's just football. I think if you ask Challenger that, he'd say the same probably. Um, so let's not let's not talk about anybody moving on it just yet. We'll we'll save that as for the for the future weeks. Yeah, but anyone that does move on again moves on as a as a champion. Abs- so. Yeah, uh, yeah. There you go. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No one. There's no. Uh, it's and and that's the thing about the parade as well, wasn't it? There's nobody. Everybody got a good round of applause. Got a good clap. There was no like ill feeling towards anybody. Not that there's going to be for a champions parade, but. Uh, Where did Connor Jennings get the bike? Yeah, that's was, a good point, uh, actually. Yeah, it was Michael Bryan's bike, so he he obviously cycled to the ground and, and left it there. Michael Bryan, the former former groundsman, before Cashy, and um, yeah, Connor just saw it, and yeah, yeah the rest is uh, the rest is history. <laughs> Much more where he the broom from there, so that was uh... yeah. yeah. Well, do you know what the the, the bike? I, he could have done himself a really. I, I'm, I'm going to sound like a 41 one year old dad now, but he could have done himself a real injury the way because it's slippy on that pitch and it on that bike, and he went over pretty hard. We well, nearly landed on his yeah on his shoulder, yeah. So, you know. So, but uh, that's, that's Connor. He's a he's a he's a great lad to be fair. So and then then quickly doing the Harry Potter thing. I just had visions of it like sticking in the ground and just hurting himself, you know, taking his way his child support at some point. I, I you know, I just had visions of it. He did an east slide, didn't he, whilst on the broom? So that's what I mean. Yeah. 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 Brave. Yeah. Brave indeed. Um, 
quick mention as well on the last day, um, Hatters 83, the display. I got involved. We all got involved. Saw Harry on the way in and he said, look, you need to do it, you know, like when the, when the tunnel, you know, when they come out of the tunnel, that was, that just looked superb, didn't it? Yeah, it was brilliant. I, I was on the pitch at the time, but we were waiting for the players to come out and uh, yeah, the perfect view of it. It was, it was brilliant, brilliant, um, perfect ending to, you know, that they've been incredible all season with the fan marches and the way that they've galvanised the support home and away. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, full credit to them. And uh, I'm sure they've got something planned for the, the first game of next season too. So I look forward to that. It's yeah. Bloody, bloody big march to Crawley. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, just, I've just had a thought. Do you know what I'm looking forward to? Um, Kenny Boxshaw saying, for this League 2 fixture. Because yeah. I remember, I remember the first time he said for this national league fixture or whatever he said at the time conference, and I, my heart just sunk, and I thought it feels like a non-league match. The very first one, I don't even know yeah. who it is against. I can't remember. It was Kettering, I think. Was it? God, you've got a good um, memory. Jesus uh, Christ! Um, you and Oldham scored the winner. Yes, uh, spectacular <laughs> oh, goal. Did. Yeah. yeah. Uh, was he Genuine... spectacular? Uh, uh, well, yeah, yeah he, he he took it from like the halfway line and didn't he and beat half a t- I, I remember. Yeah, he did was past it. a few, I think. And, and yeah, yeah, then bottom left hand, yeah. bottom right and cor- keepers bottom right and corner. Yeah, early early contender for our best ever goal in non-league. There's plenty yeah. of them eclipsed <laughs> it since then. I mean, Glenn Rule's gone and eclipsed that. So yeah. Yeah. I can just imagine that one going in and you're going best best goal in non-league. That what your yeah, best goal in non-league, very first one. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, they were the days, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. First home game because it was Forest Green on the Friday and then Kettering on the Tuesday, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, what the, a week! You know, going back to those, the, the only other person I really wanted to, to mention today, um, because you know, obviously, over the next few weeks, there'll be so much praise for, for Dave and for Mark Start and for Simon and for Jim and for you know, for all the work that's that's gone into the last 10 years. But for me, the person that started it all was uh, was Alan Lord. Yeah. Um, when he came into the club, I think, uh it felt like that day on Sunday was never going to come for a long time in terms yeah. of the decline that we were on. And he really laid the foundation for Jim to come in and and and, and take us back up. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to make sure that Lordy got a mention because I thought he, yeah. he started all oh, when, you know, it's, I know this is the start now that we're going to finish um, higher, uh, 10 seasons in a row in a higher position than we finished the last one. And, and the first one was with Lordy. So, right. um, you know, massive, massive credit to him. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it won't get said, but um, yeah, and I'll start with Lordy. So yeah, yeah I think a, f- a few people said when 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 Lordy stepped down from the manager's job that history would end up being very kind to him, and it's yeah, it's it's yeah, absolutely spot on. He's he started it all off. Obviously, yeah. obviously, we had the the kind of five or six month Neil Young thing, but that, that was quickly quickly remedied with bringing Jim back, and then yeah, he yeah. kind of continued Lordy's work. It's fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a gentleman who Jamie Willis is just mentioned in the comments. There's a gentleman who's in St. Anne's Hospice at the moment. He suffers from motor neurone disease. And Steve Bellis went out of his way to take the trophy down there today, which was just an, just just when you think this club can't get any better, you see stuff like that and just think, well, I mean, I, 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 Steve Bellis must have had a million things to do this week and has managed to to find time to go and do that it's just just brilliant yeah I, I think I think I know you talked about Alan Lord on sort of playing staff in terms of football but as well a special mentions for Steve Bellis I mean we all know Steve Bellis we all know his story he was here as a youngster and thing I say youngster he wasn't like six but he was a, <laughs> a very, he was a very young sort of commercial manager back in the day in the 90s special mention as well to George Hudson um who we know yes. he's he's poorly as well um He's he's suffering. So, if you're listening, George, thank you so much um, for everything you've done as well. Yeah, um, that, that whole thing: Hudson, Kieran, Park, Bramall, Bellis. Yeah. I've, there might be some names I've missed in there, but that whole crew to start start turning the ship round. Uh, as yeah. Steve Bellis said at the time, like it's it's a harder ship to turn round because it's bigger. That's yeah, like turning the Titanic in it, and yeah. it, it's happened. It's turned. Yeah, yeah. I know it, it took a while, didn't it? And I know there was obviously frustrations at that, but oh, yeah, they made the club a, a, an attractive proposition for someone like Mark to yeah. to come in. And uh, you know, it, it's been eleven years, but the club's probably in the strongest position now that it's that it's ever been in its history. 
going into yeah. next season. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, and and yeah, do we? Uh, we've got to say it as well. We're not holding a candle. We know the candle's gone out, but Jim Gannon for continuing the good work that yeah. that was done by Lord and when he came in 2015, I think he came in, did he? 2015, 2016. Yeah. yeah. On the Cheshire Cup. And then, uh... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cheshire Cup promotion, yeah. kind of getting players that have gone on to do well for themselves. The likes of Warburton and Lloyd have gone on yeah. to play for Lloyd. Yeah. Danny Lloyd's yeah. just been released by Gillingham, which is a shame. It would have been nice to see him next season, but we still we still might. And I'd imagine he'll get a League Two move, won't we? Yeah. Not good enough. Yeah, but this is, there's so many people. I mean, Danny Lloyd for me was, uh, as a fan, was the player that actually. Got me dreaming again about like starting moving yeah. in the right direction. So, Same, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so many players have, have, have played the part in getting getting to here. So, credit to all yeah. of them. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, right, shall we? Well, shall do you we... want to tell people about tomorrow night first of us before we uh, shoot yeah. off? Yeah, so very quickly about tomorrow night, uh, we're going to be in a location in Stockport that if you've got the Fan Hub app and you've registered, you will be there too. Um, I won't say what it is because it's quite popular already. So you need to be in the Fan Hub app and you need to have registered. If I think if you do it now, you're probably too late. Um, but yes, we're going to be having one last um, shindig. It's going to be live tomorrow. We're going to try and stream it live. Uh, from seven o'clock or maybe six thirty, might might give you the uh, the music warm up show from Rob Britner, friend of the podcast. Um, so that's what we're going to do. I don't want to say anything more about it because I think the interest is high already. And following that, we are going to have a couple of weeks break, aren't we? Should we should we go off on holiday together, us? Should we go on a little mini break? Do you know what I'd like to do with you? I'd like to go on a... <laughs> God, don't, don't answer that. <laughs> I'd, like to, I'd like to go on a, bar, a barge holiday with you, Nick. You can't up, escape up, on up, a barge, though, can you? That, that's the whole point. Get to know yeah, you but if you, well. if, you don't like, if you don't like it, that that's how like serious crimes happen. Is it? That, that, that's how I end up like getting dredged out of the canal with like an axe in the back of my head. Because you, you'll just lose it on like a particularly quiet stretch of water. And then do me in. That'll be it. My family will be looking for me, and you'll you'll just be cracking on with the podcast, doing it. You'll be doing an appeal like bloody Ian Huntley, won't you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you could do it live. You get loads of views. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you would. Yeah. People people would pay a tenner to watch yeah. you do me in. I think if that's the sort of clickbait we're after, I mean, yeah. Um... My missus will give you fifty quid. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, do you know what? As well, just to make a point, I mean, you you messaged me before, didn't you, Nick? About you, know, you see that Arsenal? It wasn't Arsenal TV, but it was an Arsenal fan having a right good go watching the telly, watching Arsenal on the telly. And I just thought, why would you wouldn't do that? Would you? We, we try to we try to pride ourselves on being authentic county fans who do this on a Wednesday when it's not a match. We're not watching along. We go to the matches. Um, imagine imagine like going the goal down to Newcastle in the league. And thinking, oh, I'm really pissed off with this. But before I get pissed off, can you just start filming me, yeah. please? And then I'm gonna. And, and he's like, he's like, this is my club. Get out of my club. It's like, well, how much is it your club really? Because you're not there. And <laughs> yeah. All the other videos I've seen of you, you're not there for them either. Yeah. So, just thought, just thought I'd bring that up. Um, Ryan yeah. Moore, uh, for tomorrow night, is there a special guest? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I said a mic. That's a special guest you've been working on. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah he'll like leave, leave Mike come along. <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it. Um, so yeah, and is there anything else we need to do is before we we end this show? Um, I don't think there is. We're going to come back next like... season with loads more, aren't we? Loads more opposition reviews, and we're probably going to go on League Two stuff as well. I guess I don't know. I kind of feel like uh, we should get Elton John out to do Candle in the Wind or something. It, fe- it feels like the end of an era. <laughs> it does. Like, we- Goodbye, do you know what? National League. <laughs> do you know what? Did you- the Boundary Park syst- alert system, Matt did it, didn't he? Goodbye, Football League. He oh, did did a- he? He's done a track. Yeah, search for it, the Boundary Park alert system. Yes, we'll talk oh, about the LP in a second. God, but that's usually the final thing. Um <laughs> But yeah, the county song, the county song as well. Oh, we're not doing a county song. Daz Sampson said, um, 
that he tried to do one and it just wasn't happening. His, his juices weren't flowing. His juices weren't flowing. Oh, so he, sh- he should have got me in the studio. Like Why? this. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Some, sometimes you need a muse, don't you? I think, I think it, if I'd kind of like pose like one of his, one of his French girls, then maybe that would have inspired him to finish a tune. Yeah. Or if you'd have gotten into like a, a, a school uniform, a girl's school uniform and started singing. All right, that's not be silly, mate. Did you do it, school today? That, that, that seems like it's more of a thing for you, that, than anyone no, else. That was his... oh, see, I, 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 know, I know it was, but yes, I think you yeah. just, uh, I think you're out, just yeah. trying to get your peccadillos into the show. It's disgusting. What's your album? My album? Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's a jaunty week, isn't it? If you can't be jaunty <laughs> when you win the Division 5 title, so I've gone for a bit of Which we're too uh, sexy for, by the way. We're too sexy for the fifth. It's Chaz and Dave this week. Because oh, I, I just don't care. Don't care. I just I don't care anymore, Russ. What are you going to do? What's your problem? <laughs> what's, your, what's, your, what's your problem with Chaz and Dave, Russ? I just don't... I just, Mind you, you don't like Only Fools and Horses either, do you? Cause no, you're, I don't. Because you're an absolute gimp. No, I don't like it. See, Liam, you don't like it either, do you, Liam? No, I do. I'm, I'm oh, you do? You, I'm shaking oh, well, you, 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 Yeah, well, yeah. you don't like, you don't like music, Liam don't so. like music. You don't like yeah. Only Fools and Horses. I'm <laughs> fucking done, lads. I need, <laughs> I, need, I need this two weeks off. Have it, have it, have it. <laughs> you might as well listen to the Lancashire Rock Pots. No, because one of them's a paedophile. No. Yeah. Oh. Probably, a crew, probably a crew fan. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get a shutdown at this rate. Um, Finally. So if you haven't liked the show, please hit the like button. Please, please, please. And whatever podcast player you listen to it on, please uh, hit the like button and review and rate and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you to everybody that has listened, contributed, played back, downloaded, interacted, anything, said hello at the ground, you know, any of that. Um, I'm not going to say thanks to anybody that's bought me a drink because nobody has. So, um, <laughs> did they buy you any, Nick? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> I've I've had a grand total of two pints off people. Wow. Yeah, I I got, got given one on one the other night, and then yeah, one a couple of months back. Uh, fair, Matt Matt Limbert and Rick Ebbage both both have bought me a pint recently. So there you go. Sorry, Russ, but you you went early on Saturday, didn't you? Sunday. You, Sunday. Well, it's all the same, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you, you went early on yeah, Sunday, didn't you? I, did, I didn't. Do you know what? Right, I went early because I was there, obviously there with, with, with my lad. And was I it when I me... ordered the seventh zombie? Was, was, was that when you thought, <laughs> oh, let's go? No, no. I said, I said, I said sit down. I said, I'm gonna, can, am I going to stay for Because I, I know what it's like. I was there as a kid being in the yeah, pub when yeah. dad's at football. It's, it's boring. And I said to him, right, can I, I'm going to order another pint. And he just went, dad. I'm all, I've had loads of coke. I'm playing on my phone. My battery's nearly gone. Come on. And I was like, yeah, okay, let's go home. Got home. Claire said, oh, that's strange. I thought you'd have stayed out and just got me to come and pick him up. And I'm like, oh, shit. It's like Wrexham tickets all over again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. There you go. I'm sure we'll have a good night tomorrow night. Um. So on that note, should we say goodbye to to the National League. It, it, it feels like we're saying goodbye forever, doesn't it? Well, to the National League, we are. But yeah, yeah. in terms of like saying goodbye to the listeners, it, it feels like it's forever, but it's not. A couple of weeks. Only oh, yeah, a, well, a couple of weeks, guys. We'll be back. I mean, no, no one's worried. No one gives a shit. Yeah, no one cares. <laughs> um, is there anything final you want to say, Liam, on this 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 last 2021-22 podcast? Um, I, just thanks to the fans, I guess, because like they've made it the most unbelievable season for me. Um, the back end of the National League North season, I thought, wow, but this season everyone's just took it up another level and I know how much the players appreciate it. And for, for me, the, the you know my job is to sell the club to people, to press and stuff, and, and the fans are the, are the easiest way for me to do that because everyone that comes to Edgeley Park this season, if it's BBC, Sky, BT, they've all just said the same thing, which is which is wow. So uh, thanks for making my life easier. And... and uh, well done to you guys as well for, for the work you do every week to keep it going every week. It was uh, it was a tough tough at the start of the season, but uh, yes. I'll work it in the end. So cheers, thank you. Yeah, yeah cheers, thank you. Thanks, thanks, after, you so should we end it on a, a cheers, thank you after three? Ready? One, two, three. Cheers, yes, thank, thank you. you.